think that's an old Subaru. I think we had. I think my mum had one of these when we were we were kids. It was a red one though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> Yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a Subaru. One of the Subaru Brumbies? No, it's a little hatchback. It was a sort of a four-wheel drive kind of station wagon. Yeah. I'll send it to Mum. Say, hey Mum, I found your old car. Seen better days. You like the doors just welded up? It's yep. great. <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah. It's crazy. So I like the I like the cage imagery. It's um you know, you can read all sorts of things into that. The cages we build for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Just noticed him. <laughs> I've had a few dreams, like after we watched Mad Max 1 and 2 as well, I did have a few little bits come into dreams that night, which is very weird. I like the Mad Max aesthetic because it's very do-it-yourself. It's all very, you can see the welds and the rivets and the, the gaffer tape that, you know, creates all of these things. That's another cage match drawing. And then um, that was an early one when I got here, sort of a bit of a warm-up, which isn't quite finished yet. Um, there's a few, a few masks up here that I've been fiddling around with as well. I, I couldn't say for sure, but I would think that all of these movies being made here has been good for Broken Hill in some capacity. Um, hopefully we'll see more of the same, you know, more, um, more movies being made here or artworks being created here that, that are saying their own thing. Um, So who's to say? If I gave you a start point, it would probably be, you know, my mum insists that she took me to the toy shop when I was, it was my third birthday, and um, I chose a, a He-Man toy, and, and that was probably, I think that, I don't remember that. I remember the toy, but I don't remember choosing it but um, she says that was the first sort of real exposure that I had to that sort of world of, you know, toys and comics. And because those toys actually used to come with a little mini comic. And um, so I think, I think both, both experiences were wrapped up together, quite literally. And He-Man is a fascinating enterprise in itself it's got all sorts of very interesting and very funny and subversive elements to it which i really appreciate um, and he man was like this big beefcake guy who um, had a magic sword and would hold up his sword and transform into he man so it was pretty funny yeah lots of um he's got lots of great villains as well Skeletor is one of the all-time great villains. He's a very camp, sort of cackly, skull-faced fellow. Um, but I always liked him because he, he'll, give, he'll give his henchmen a hard time for not reading enough and this sort of thing. So he, he's a great, great villainous role model for libraries the world over. Everything was airbrushed, you know, like the, the title cards were all, they had that amazing sort of shiny 80s logo thing going on. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh, and he rode a big green and yellow striped um, cat called Battle Cat, just so you know. And Battle Cat transformed as well. A lot of transforming going on in the 80s. And 
I, I actually think He-Man may be partly responsible for the number of uh, bodybuilders in the generations following. Um, I, think, I think he, more than anything, has helped um, stimulate the, the economy of bodybuilding and that whole sort of subculture. Um, there used to be a comic shop in Sydney. Actually, it might still be there, um, but it was a comic shop and a, they sold comics and they sold bodybuilding supplements at the same shop. I'm not, I'm not joking either, by the way, um, in Enmore. And um, yeah, the guy that ran it was this big beefcake dude who loved comics, you know, so there's definitely uh, some crossover there. Wrestling and superheroes and all that. Gateway drug. <laughs>